Hi, Lisa Christensen here, the blogger for May Dream Rose, and I wanted to share with you how I paint this beautiful stamp. And let's get started. So I'm going to use um, the stamp from Blue Night Stamps. It's called Delightful Dandelions. And then I'm using my archival ink. And then I'm using this magnetic block from Blue Night Stamps. You can get it. And this just helps your fingers not get inky, uh, which I love. And then for the watercoloring, I'm going to be using this core dot sheet, which has like, it's their starter uh, kit for like, if you're wanting to start watercolor, you could try these colors out, see if you like it, and then buy the whole set. Um, and sometimes if you buy the set, then this will come in free for like a plein air type thing. If you're just wanting to paint a little bit on the go, these are perfect for that. So anyways, um, I am definitely a fan of professional watercolors, and I think that that's really the only way to do it. So let, I'm going to get this stamp ready to go. And I usually start at the bottom, see if like where the lines go me and then at the top is usually where. Okay, that looks good. Sometimes it's hard to tell until you actually stamp it, but I'm going to go with it. Now you could use any stamp, any sentiment if you don't like the sentiment. Um, but the, the flowers are my favorite. I got this and I got the stamp set for the flowers because I absolutely love the dandelions and actually I wanted to paint them in a purple so it looks more like a like a purple flower instead of a dandelion which I think you totally could do that. I'm gonna ink it one more time. I don't think it inked as well as sometimes with new stamps you have to ink it more than once. It's just part of seasoning the stamp so I don't ever um, like think that that's a bad thing for the stamp and when you're stamping on watercolor <laughs> you really have you do need a couple layers that looks better I like that all right so, all right I'm going to start with yellow and honestly I'm going to <laughs> paint almost the whole section I'm going to just paint the whole thing yellow and you'll see why in a second and this is going to be more of like a wet onto wet technique and I'm paying attention to the center. I want more yellow in the center, but it doesn't really matter. And I need a lot of water. I want this to be loose and fluid, which means I need a lot of water. And I probably should have taped this down, but my fingerprints won't be really in the way. I am um, studying a floral book from Jean Haynes, um, Atmospheric Florals is the name of the book. And I absolutely love her, um, the way she writes, the way she paints, the way she explains things. It just makes it so fun. So when I'm painting florals, I'm always thinking, okay, what will Jean Haynes say about this? How are we, how are we making the, how are we getting the emotion into the floral? And that's what it's all about, right? So I'm, I'm adding the atmospheric part. Like I want there to be a different, I don't want it to all look the same. Okay. Now, because I'm just doing, I'm going to take this red. This is pyro, pyro red medium. It's going to be very bright. So I'm only adding a little bit. I just really, I, what I really want is for it to just kind of turn a little bit orange with the yellow, which means I'm going to have to add yellow to it. And I like to mix on the paper. I don't love mixing my paint on the palette. Don't get me wrong. I do that a lot, but it's not my favorite way by adding just a little bit of the red to make it orange will really, I think, make the floral stand out. And then I'm just paying attention where the pigment's going and acting accordingly. And this is a very loose style and I know a lot of people probably are cringing right now thinking, oh my gosh, she's ruining <laughs> I'm not I promise I know what I'm doing um, and I'm actually this paper that I'm using is from my mixed media sketchbook 
that I cut down to size. It is perfect for cards like this. Um, yeah. All right, so I got to let that dry a little bit, and I can work on, and I really like, you can't quite see it probably here, but I like how it's a little bit lighter here. I like how the water is, the watercolor is blending and making that orange and red and yellow color, so I'm, I'm leaving that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of green, and I'm going to start at the bottom and then just kind of work my way up. What I don't want to have happen is to have a whole lot of green in my yellows and reds because that will a little bit turn mud and I don't, my goal is to not create mud. That is, but I, again, this is just a wash. So we'll go back in once it's dry a little bit more and paint it because with watercolor it's really nice to work in layers okay and because I really want the I am going to add a little bit of blue to the green Not much, just enough for it to kind of, and it will dry a lot lighter. There. I'm going to just dab it a little bit. I don't want a whole lot of blue, but I like that. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that. I think the this part is dry just enough that I can work with it. Again, it dries lighter, so I can always come back for the second layer and add a little bit more if I need to. But I'm and then I really like this dairy light yellow. It just has this beautiful yellow attributes that that I want. So. To me, those are looking more and more like like <laughs> dandelions. My husband and my father-in-law would call these weeds. I think they're beautiful. And I just learned that about 100 years ago, our ancestors would use dandelions for lots of medicinal purposes. And so I wonder what happened. Why, as a society, we think dandelions are weeds now? I guess it doesn't really matter, but oh, I love it. I'm going to walk away from this. The only thing I might change once it's completely dry is I will probably come back and add lines like this to the dandelions. Really simple lines were like right here but I want it to be a little bit more prominent and I don't want it to necessarily bleed everywhere. So I'm going to let it dry, come back, use, do those lines, and then I'm going to call it good. And I really like that. I think this is a beautiful card to send out to friends, to loved ones that maybe are having a hard time, whatever. So it'll brighten someone's day. I'm grateful to have those cards on hand. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. Look, we like stamped and painted a whole card in about 10 minutes, which I think is awesome because who has the time to, to spend a whole lot of time on cards when you really, what you want to say is I'm really thinking of you. So um, enjoy painting. Check out Blue Night Stamps. And check out Core Watercolor if you're looking for some watercolor. Um, they might even send you a sample in for in the mail for free. You never know. Um, that's what I did. I contacted them, said I wanted a, a dot sheet, and they said, okay, here you go. So thank you, Core, for the dot sheet. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Have a good one, you guys. See you soon.